All right, guys, here it is, the brand new Glock 26 Gen 5. Check out the video. America! Hey everybody out in Gunland, thanks for watching our videos. What we have for you today is a pretty highly anticipated firearm. This is the Glock 26 Gen 5. The newest baby Glock as they call it. The double stack 9mm, not to be confused with the single stack 43. This is the one of the newer offerings for 2018 from Glock. This in the in the G34 MOS. Check out our other video about it. This is the the carry gun that's been kind of a standard since the late 90s, I believe it was, maybe 95, 96. The the 26 came out. Um, this is a gun that a lot of people carry. I know a lot of people were pretty excited about it. It is their little short barrel gun. We will kind of go over all the details here in just a minute when we do what's in the box, and then we're gonna take it out, shoot it, and check it out, and see what everybody thinks about it. So stay tuned, and here we go. Here's the unboxing portion of the video. It comes in the plastic uh, Glock case that we're so used to seeing with the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s. If you've been messing with guns as long as I have, you'll remember the older Glocks used to come in the Tupperware boxes, but no longer. So let's see what is in here. So there it is in all its glory. So I'm gonna scoop this over where we can lay things out where we can see stuff. So of course it comes with the gun. We are going to clear this gun just to make all of our safety fans happy. The gun is in fact clear, so from here on out, I can handle it without talking about safety anymore. We have our Hillary Clinton Commie Lock that comes with it, uh, with every gun just about that sells in America, I believe. And then we have the back grips, uh, or the grip extensions or replacements, whatever you want to call it. It is, uh, comes with, this has been happening since Gen 4, they started including these. I'm not sure how many people are gonna actually use them on the 26 because these big beaver tails and things kind of lengthen the gun and it's supposed to be a concealed carry pistol. People buy it because it's small. We have three magazines. These are the Orange Follower Gen 5 magazines. They have uh, recently added that Orange Follower in there. I can only assume it is to help us tell whether or not it is loaded a little bit easier and more clearly. So there's three of these magazines, all of which are empty in case we stick one in the gun to talk about it. They are 10 round magazines. You can put your, your larger magazines in there for the 19 and the 17. They'll go in the gun itself uh, and, and just hang out at the bottom if that's your thing. We have the speed loader that comes with all the Glocks. If you, you own very many Glocks, you probably have these laid all over your house. We have the brush that comes with it. We have the uh, rod for the brush with the hole in it that allows you to put patches in there uh, when you go to clean your gun. And then of course we have the standard everyday um, manual that comes with it. I, I don't know if this is required by law, but it sure is required by the insurance companies if you're a gun manufacturer. So we will, well, I'll just leave that laying out for the remainder of the video. So as uh, you may or may not know, the 26 is a double stack gun, uh, meaning that the bullets uh, stack side by side, uh, kind of staggered in there. It, that gives us more capacity versus say the Glock 43 that is a single stack gun. These are 10 round magazines. Uh, it does cause the 26 to be a little wider than the uh, 43, the 26 clocks in width-wise at right at about an inch, whereas the uh, 43 is going to be a little narrower than that. This still makes for a great carry gun. People are carrying this gun 
long before anybody thought about the 43. And I think the 43 is kind of in response to the, the rash of single stack guns. You know, Carr kind of, as far as I know, people can correct me in the comments, but Carr was one of the first single stack small carry guns to be out there, uh, you know, barring 1911s, of course. And then uh, guys like Springfield's followed suit with the XDS, which in 45 was revolutionary. Uh, and then of course now everybody has one Glock and um, SIG is putting one out this year with the 365. And um, I just saw another one the other day, I don't recall, but I will get back on topic about the 26. So this is a pretty highly anticipated gun. This thing's been a, been a carry gun for a lot of people. Uh, so what we'll do now is we will talk about what the difference is between this and the Gen 4s. Um, we also have a video uh, that is nothing but Gen 5 versus Gen 4 versus Gen 3, what the difference is and that kind of thing. And we have another video about Gen 5 MOS 34 if you want to check that one out too. So we should be able to cover this topic fairly heavily as to what is different. So I will kind of work top to bottom. We have this NDLC finish. It is on the gun itself and it is on the barrel. This is replacing that Tenniford finish that Glock used to use. Uh, I always thought that finish was a fine finish. It's held up really well. I've carried them in my cars and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not sure how different this is versus the other one. I know on the 19s and the 17s, the, the edges have changed. I don't have a 26 uh, to compare to that's an older one but that is definitely a nice angle on the front of the gun itself if you can see that in the camera. The sights are pretty well the same. They're that boxy rear sight with the white uh, dot front sight. I believe that the, the hole is a little bit wider as I saw on another video uh, in researching this gun some. And so you do get a little bit faster sight acquisition if I can kind of get it right in there for you but it's a little bit wider than it was. We have uh, the Ambi slide release on here. There is actually a little loaded chamber indicator tab. So I believe Glock is saying that it's a new chamber indicator. Um, I can't recall if I've seen that on old guns or not. You guys can comment about that if you like. We have uh, the, the finish on the grip is their RTF finish, their rough textured frame is what they call that, RTF. Uh, they also had an RTF released um, gun that was, was one of their special editions. Um, and then there is the barrel, is this new marksman barrel as they call it. It is a change in their rifling. It's a hexagonal rifling, or some people say it's polygonal, uh, but it is a more accurate one than their older barrels were. I do believe that to be the case. This was a pretty darn accurate little gun. We have, uh, most of the Gen 5s have the flared Magwell. This one does not. It also does not have that front cutout. Um, you can always lengthen the grip if you like with the uh, aftermarket magazine extensions. Your pinky does hang off a little bit. I am, you know, most of us don't hold a lot with our pinky. It's really there for just psychological support, I think. So I've, I've felt pretty comfortable at the grip on this, especially when you double up. I mean, that's a really solid grip on this gun. It's still not gonna wiggle much on you, but if you just can't deal with it, you can add an extension on that grip if that's what makes you happy. So we covered the barrel. Uh, I mentioned the ambidextrous slide release. We do have the safety that is reversible on the gun, and then we have this smooth face trigger. The trigger in the gun, I believe, is new as well. It does feel a little crisper and lighter. So if we pull that trigger, you'll see it has some take up, and then it pretty well hits a wall. It has a mild creep, and then it goes. So that is what you get. I like the trigger in this gun. I feel like it's a little better than the old ones. And then if you guys want to see the reset on the gun, we will do that as well. So here is the reset. It is pretty short. I mean, that's, that's not a lot of travel for reset. Whoop. 
Try one more time. See the reset? So that's pretty good. Uh, so that's kind of the rundown on the Gen 5 features. It disassembles like any other Glock. You push back slightly on the slide, that may have been too much, you disengage the action. You push back slightly on the side, you push down on the little tabs there, as you would expect. This is a little awkward based on my position around the camera. So let me, there it goes. And that is your disassembly. So as we are accustomed to seeing, it has the double captive recoil spring. This is not new to the Gen 5, it is a Gen 4 feature. We have the barrel here that just slides out. So this is about as far as most people want to break a Glock down. Some hobbyists might tear it apart a little further or the uh, uh, gunsmiths. But here's the barrel. If we put a tape on it, we're right at three and a quarter inches to the back of the chamber there. The barrel itself, physical barrel, is about two inches long. So that is the size that the barrel is in this thing. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pop this together and reassemble it. It goes back together the way it came apart. You put the little plastic piece in the front of the slide. You gotta make real sure to get it all the way down. Otherwise it is going to get funky when you try to put it back together. We, you have the guides on the frame here and we slide this guy back together. Put it right there in the back. That's it, she's back together. So there we are, that is our Gen 5 Glock 26. Super great little gun. Uh, everybody loves the 26 that's ever owned one. So there we go. Check her out and we are going to move to the shooting portion now. All right, we're gonna see how this Glock 26 Gen 5 performs. Uh, we mentioned the nicer trigger and the better barrel, so hopefully that's going to contribute to some accuracy there. Let's, uh, I'm going to be running this Blazer Brass, or, or Blazer Aluminum rather. I'm kind of a big fan of the Blazer ammo, but the point is this is really cheap stuff. I want to see how the really cheap stuff runs in the Glock 26. And what we'll do is we'll go down here, we'll shoot some paper to judge some accuracy at about seven yards, and then we'll bang around on some of that steel down there and see what we think of the gun in general. Here we go. Okay, so as we discussed, we have a 10 round magazine for this gun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put 10 rounds on a paper target where we have a pretty good idea as to what kind of accuracy we can get. We're out at about seven yards right now and we're gonna give it a shot. Looks like we got a really nice group on that. The slide did go ahead and lock back. This is a really manageable little gun. The fact that it that your pinky hangs off the bottom, it really doesn't bother me much at all. We can see the grouping that I got here. I wasn't really particularly trying to be unusually accurate or hold still or anything like that. So it really is a hell of a shooter. I mean, this, this little gun having a short barrel like that, you'd expect it to be a little bit wilder, but it's not, I'm pretty impressed. All right, so we're gonna check this Glock 26 out. This is kind of a long distance. We're at about 15 yards here uh, because we're shooting at steel and we wanna be safe and try to not reflect that steel back at us. We're shooting an AR500 Target Solutions dueling tree. Uh, an interesting part of it is that the, um, the steel is angled forward slightly, so it does help deflect some of that. So what we're gonna do here, uh, this little piece of the video is gonna show up in both this video and that video. Uh, it's kind of a review on shooting this thing. We've already shot it a little bit. Uh, we needed to edit that video some, so we're gonna do it again but this thing's a lot of fun to shoot. So let's, let's shoot the tree a little bit.
Miss. Top. Second. All right, that's 10 rounds. Let's reload. Oh, missed that one. There we go. Miss. Missed twice. Three times. This is my unlucky one. I'm going to move back to another one then. Oh, there we go. There we go. Got that nasty top one I keep missing. Bottom. Awesome. So that's a lot of fun. If you don't have one of these dueling trees, I think this thing was about 300 bucks, so it wasn't the cheapest thing ever, but it's really, really cool. So if you don't have a dueling tree, I would check one out. As for this little Glock, we can see these are about four inch by four inch targets at 15 yards. And other than that one, for some reason that had my number that I couldn't get any rounds in, we were able to, to hit really consistently with this. So let's shoot a little more steel and we're gonna go from there and then we'll, we'll tidy up the rest of the video. All right guys, let's shoot just a little bit more steel. change mags. This is actually going to be an ammo brand change now with this magazine. I'm not even sure what it is. It's just some junk I had in my car. Whoa. Try over here. I'm missing like crazy. There we go. Only five rounds in that mag. Let's, all right, let's go back to my brazier steel or blazer aluminum again. I think it's better shooting than whatever that other stuff was. I cannot hit that target to save my life. I'm gonna move over here to the left a little. I don't know what that one's got my number. There we go. Yeah, that's a good one. Go to the dueling tree. Ooh, that was a miss. There it goes. One of the small ones on the right. Oh, that was a miss too. Oh, there we go. All right, guys. All right, guys. This little gun's a ton of fun. I don't mind the fact that my pinky finger hangs off the end. I think it's pretty comfortable. I mean, all your strength is in your, uh, these two fingers anyway. And then if you grip it right and get behind your, your gun, you're, you're good to go. Uh, you just need a, a decent grip on it. I think the recoil is really manageable on the gun. I didn't notice it being any worse than some of the bigger Glocks. I think all in all, this thing's a shooter. I'm a big fan. I, I do think it's an improvement over the other guns. I like the trigger better, and I feel like it may be a little more accurate, but I hadn't run 26 a whole lot in the uh, Gen 3 or the Gen 4, so maybe there's not much difference, but this one really did shoot really well. So if you don't have a Glock 26, this makes a great little carry gun. You might want to go pick one up, and if I were going to pick one up, I would get it in the Gen 5. Y'all take it easy. Hey guys, it's Mr. Guns. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was cool, go ahead and like and subscribe. We should have a bunch of cool stuff coming in the future too. Uh, or follow us on Facebook and Instagram if you just want to get good gun deals or see what we got going on. The links will be in the descriptions below. So thanks for watching the video and we hope you'll follow us in the future.